Good afternoon. It's a Saturday. I kind of like to get my big face out of this video a bit. In the background, you'll see a painting that uh, my father treasured. It shows a white throat sparrow. He is the harbinger of spring to the Northland. And when you get up around North Bay and parts further up than that, you will hear that wonderful Canadian sound. Chee, 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 Canada, Canada, Canada. That's, that's the way they are. It's beautiful to hear. And they pass through southwestern Ontario fairly quickly and end up away up there. It's a call. You realize you're in the fresh air land and the deer land and the wolf land and the blueberry land <laughs> and the pickerel land when you get there. And certainly my dad went there often fishing with his good friend Bill Ward. What I have here is, is something uh, which is a gem in my estimation. I've read a lot of stuff by Oswald Chambers. Many have heard of his devotional, My Utmost for His Highest. Well, I have in my hand right now one that is uh, other than that, entitled Daily Thoughts for Disciples. I've found rich stuff in there to, to munch upon in terms of our state in the spirit with Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. But this one has to do with busyness. Uh, it's in his devotional for May the 8th, but that doesn't matter. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there's no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible nowhere teaches us to work for work's sake. That is one of the greatest bugbears of the anti-Christian movement in the heart of Christianity today. It is work with a capital letter W, in which the worship of Jesus Christ is lost sight of. People will sacrifice themselves endlessly for the work. Perspiration is mistaken for inspiration. Our guidance with regard to work is to remember that its value is in what it does for us. It is difficult not to let ulterior considerations come in. What's the good of doing this? We're only here for a short time. Why should we do it as if it were to last forever? Well, Solomon's counsel is, whatsoever thy hand attaineth to do by thy strength, that do. He is not recommending work for work's sake, but because through the drudgery of work, the man himself is developed. When you deify work, you apostatize from Jesus Christ. In the private spiritual life of many a Christian, it is work that has hindered concentration on God. When work is out of its real relation, it becomes a means of evading concentration on God. Carlyle pointed out that the weariness and sickness of modern life is shown in the restlessness of work. When a man is not well, he is always doing things, an eternal fidget. Intense activity may be the sign of spiritual, sorry, of physical weariness. When a man is healthy, his work is so much part of himself that you never know he is doing it. He does it with his might, and that makes no fuss. We lose by the way we do our work, <laughs> the very thing it is intended to bring us. At the back of all is the one thing God is after, what a man is, not what a man does. And Solomon keeps that in view all the time. It is what we are in our relation to things that counts, not what we attain to in them. If you put attainment as the end, you may reap a broken heart and find that all your outlay ends in disaster. Death cuts it short, or disease, or ruin. Well, he's describing there someone who is driven, probably approval-seeking, and burned out. Uh, Peggy Lee, that jazz singer of the 60s, had a song, Is That All There Is? And that's about where the overworked person gets. If he puts hard work, nose to the grindstone, at the top of the pyramid, at the top of the totem pole, we'll say. You know, uh, in the story of Moses, uh, there came that episode with the brass serpent statue that was raised in front of the people who were all getting bitten by venomous snakes. 
uh, the Lord told Moses to relate to the people, look upon this thing and live. Uh, it was as if uh, that image of great sin stuck up on a, a branch or a cross was the remedy for all these other biting, hostile, venomous critters underfoot. And it was therefore a great episode for God in a marvelous way stepping in and rescuing the children of Israel. But down the road, um, that statue was placed in a most recognizable spot in the temple. And there came a king who at some point said, look, that's just a piece of brass. Enough of this idolatry. We're not here for that. We're here for closer and closer abiding in the Lord. So he told them to get rid of it. Well, the piece of brass thinking can get into anything that starts out seeming religious and helpful, but ends up being an idol. We can take anything. Missions, evangelism, bus ministry, music ministry, tithes and offerings, Holy Communion. We can do those things so that they rise to the top of the totem pole. But guess what? They can end up just being brass. It is Jesus and a growing relationship and intimacy with him and the whisperings in and through the Holy Ghost that will get us where we want to be. These are all means to the end of greater intimacy. But any one of those things, those objects of worship and emphasis, can end up out of whack. That's all I'll say now. Thanks for listening to this. It's Doug Blair. Bye for now.